Um, but yes, I was uh, in charge of, in charge of, but I was the mentor for the students this summer, had a great time, have had so much fun working with WPY in our first year. So we're super excited for years to come with you guys. Um, I'd like to introduce Nick Skinner. He's our SVP of HR, and he comes across the pond from Cambridge, UK, where our headquarters is. And he has a few remarks, and we want to share with you guys a couple slides. Thank you, and, and welcome. Uh, welcome to ABCAM. I'm just going to do a really practical thing, first of all, which is just reminding everybody a little bit, a little bit about health and safety. Um, in terms of uh, fire evacuation, we don't have a fire alarm. So if there is a fire alarm, uh, if you don't have a fire alarm practice, if there is one, it's real. And all you need to do is follow the signs, which are, you can see are illuminated around the, the building. Uh, we'll have time, plenty of time for comfort breaks. So um, uh, we'll also be able to point you to the, the uh, restrooms as well. But I'm going to share with you just a couple of slides, just to give you a little background about who we are, because you're sat in our building, and we thought we'd just take a couple of seconds to say what we do uh, and, um, and welcome you to the team. So welcome to ABCAM. Uh, we are a global business. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, if you wouldn't mind. Um, and this is how we started. This is uh, a bike. Uh, and this is in Cambridge, UK, a research scientist really wanted to make a difference in research uh, by selling and getting antibodies, which is what we make, uh, to scientists really quickly. So he founded the business and he went around Cambridge in the UK, around the universities, uh, selling antibodies from his bike. Um, so great start and kind of came from really, he came from a, a, a normal state, a state school background uh, and uh, founded, this, founded this business. Uh, and that was 24 years ago. Um, today, um, we have 1,800 colleagues around the world uh, producing life sciences tools for life science researchers to use to make amazing breakthroughs. Uh, and our tools were used uh, throughout the COVID period in working to build the vaccines, but also to support uh, some of the diagnostics as well. Um, so we have 1,800 colleagues around the world, but we have this amazing facility here in Waltham. This is a big investment for us. It's 100,000 square feet, uh, and we're investing a lot of time in building out new products here in Cambridge and hiring lots of people. Um, if you move on, Gina, to the next one. Um, and we're very excited to have you here today uh, because it really fits with our, our, our purpose. Uh, and a lot of work we're doing around our employee resource groups, and you can see some of them there, and particularly our social mobility group. We've, done a, we've had a partnership in our UK business for a number of years, really to try and reach people from very different backgrounds and inspire them into having careers uh, in science. So the partnership and working with yourselves is really awesome for us uh, because it mirrors what we've been doing in our other sites as we try and support people into uh, other careers. So um, you've heard about the interns. Uh, they did an awesome job with us uh, and we're really excited about partnership in the future. So that's us. Um, you'll see some of our team around. A big shout out to our ABCAM team, the tech team, the, the recruitment team, who've done an amazing job of pulling this together to support you to have an amazing day. So thank you, ABCAM team. Um, and have an, a great time. And please ask us any questions uh, about our experiences as well as you go. So thank you. You'll have to share with Nick. I don't know how well they'll travel on the plane, but. <laughs> so thank you, Heidi, uh, and to you and your colleagues at AvCam for your investment in Waltham's youth. We look forward to many more years of partnership as well. Uh, we'd also like to thank Heidi specifically for her leadership and role in planning this morning's meeting. She has been endlessly patient and helpful as we have transitioned back to planning an in-person annual meeting for the first time in many years. We are so proud of, your part, of our partnership with Heidi and ABCAM. Heidi, please come back to the podium and accept your flowers, but I, already, I, I, I wanted to fill the, the space uh, while we transition the technology back, which was seamless. So great job, tech team, as well. Um, so now I'd just like to take a moment to recognize some special guests that we have with us here today. 
So uh, first, uh, State Senator Mike Barrett has joined us. Uh, his advocacy has led to state funds for WPY and a number of other critical nonprofits in our community. So thank you for joining us today. And then I'd also just like to take a moment to uh, thank uh, Superintendent of Waltham Public Schools, Dr. Brian Regan, whose partnership and leadership is also uh, absolutely integral to our success as well. All right, so this is my favorite part. So before turning it over to Katie, we do have some uh, brief official business to attend to. Uh, but first, I'd like to take a moment, and uh, we as an organization would like to take a moment to recognize two longstanding board members uh, for their years of dedication. After 15 years of service, David King is stepping down from our board. Uh, David has served as a member of the Finance Committee and as the board of representative for the Linda King Memorial Fund. As the former business manager for Waltham Public Schools, his skills in the areas of budgeting and finance, as well as his depth of knowledge about the city and the school department have made him an invaluable asset to our organization. So David, if you could please come up here. Um, I got a little token of our appreciation that I'd like to share with you uh, and just grab a quick photo. I should have told you not to sit all the way in the back. And then I also just want to recognize um, Connie Braceland. She couldn't be with us here today, uh, but I did want to uh, mention our appreciation. And she was uh, a very longstanding board president prior to uh, me and uh, provided me with a lot of mentorship and um, just practical information about the organization before I stepped into this role. Um, so after an impressive 20 years, uh, 20 plus years of service, Connie Braceland is also stepping down. Uh, Connie has been a steadfast supporter of WPY, including as board president for many years. She has helped steward the organization through leadership transitions and has been instrumental in securing significant support from leading members of the business community. We are unquestionably a stronger organization thanks to Katie's dedicate or thanks to Connie's dedication. Uh, Connie is un able to join us today, as I mentioned, uh, but please join me in a round of applause uh, in gratitude for Connie's service. All right, so the uh, official business portion of the meeting uh, is gonna happen right now. Um, please keep in mind that only WPY board members are able to vote during this business meeting. Um, so board members, please listen carefully. Uh, we have a few votes that we need to take. Uh, so first, um, I would entertain a motion. Or first, I need to call the meeting to order. So I'm calling the 2022 annual meeting to order. Uh, first, I would entertain a motion to approve the 2021 annual business meeting minutes. Uh, WPY board members, all those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? And any abstentions? All right, the motion carries. So the minutes are approved. Uh, now I'm delighted to share the recommendation of the nominating committee for our slate of directors to serve for a three-year term. Uh, first, Larry Bayless, who is returning. Julie Bolg, who is returning. Annie Jean Batiste, who is a new member. Amy King, who is a new member, Myra Levinson, who is a new member, Doug Waybright, who is returning, and Erica Young, who is returning. So WP board members, WPY board members, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? All right, the vote passes. And so welcome to our new board members and welcome back to our returning board members. And before I share our slate of officers, I just want to give a, a special shout out first for the applause earlier, uh, but also for your many years of service as clerk uh, to Larry Bayless, who um, has decided to continue to be a board member, but no longer serve as clerk. So thank you uh, for your service. Uh, 
so the nominating committee has put forth the following officers, uh, Clarence Richardson for president, Anne Mokulski for vice president, Doug Waybright for treasurer, and Asan Alam for clerk. So WPY board members, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And any abstentions? All right, the vote carries. So the officers will be serving for a one year term. So thank you very much. All right, so at this time, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? And any abstentions? All right, so that concludes our official business meeting of uh, our annual meeting. Uh, and so now it is my privilege and honor to turn it over to the one and only Katie Dowsett, our executive director. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It always warms my heart to have so many of us in the room together celebrating our work. As you all well know, partnership is in our name because the work of supporting and empowering young people in our community is truly a collective effort. I wanna take a moment to recognize the many ways you all contribute to this work. To our board of directors, including those returning, those stepping down, and those who were newly elected. Thank you for serving as ambassadors, fiscal stewards, and strategic advisors, ensuring a healthy long-term outlook for our organization. Would the, all the board members please stand and be recognized? We have some board members on the call too. We know you're there. To the incredible WPY staff who, in addition to managing logistics, cultivating and sustaining relationships with community partners, including many of you, coordinating events and programs, ensuring timely data entry, everyone's favorite, and attending a gazillion meetings, they always prioritize being there for the students and families in whatever ways they need, and doing so with compassion, dignity, and love. Please stand and be recognized, WPY team. So I'm now going to list a number of other important roles, and I ask you to stand if you fit into the category. Please stand until the end, and we'll hold our applause until the end. Donors and funders, if you've ever made a, even a $1 donation to WPY, please stand. Stay standing. Employer partners, if you've hosted interns. Uh, school partners, folks from Waltham Public Schools. Wraparound program partners interpretation partners, Dritha, I know you're on the call, volunteers, university partners, parents. Is there anyone other than students who we're going to do after? Is there anyone whose role I missed? All right, please just look around and give yourselves and each other a round of applause. Lastly, and of course, most importantly, I want to recognize and honor the young people we have the privilege and responsibility to work for and to work with every day. I know I speak for the entire WPY team in saying that not a single day goes by that we are not impressed by the courage, brilliance, and kindness of Waltham youth. We have the privilege of having our office right in the high school, and so we have young people coming in and out throughout the day, and um, we're so glad the school year has started because the energy is just palpable. Um, there's every, sorry, every single day, there's at least one moment that melts our hearts or inspires us or buoys us. Um, and so uh, it's a school day, so we don't have too many young people in the room with us today, uh, but we do have uh, one student rep, Ivy Garcia Barrios, who is our uh, student speaker today. If you don't mind standing and being recognized on behalf of all Waltham youth. Like so many of the youth we work with, Ivy pushes herself every day um, out of her comfort zone to improve herself and the world around her, and we are grateful. So later this year, we're going to be celebrating WPY's 35th anniversary. This milestone has given us the opportunity to take stock of all we have accomplished together during this time. 
As some of you know, WPY was born in 1988 when uh, then Mayor William F. Stanley convened a diverse group of stakeholders for a summit focused on Waltham youth, during which he proclaimed, the time is right for a partnership. As citizens, we know the education and welfare of our neighbor's child is something in which we all have an interest. We understand that the future of our community is linked to the welfare of our children. We act together knowing we jointly own what finally gets done. Kids are our bottom line. So from that summit, WPY was created in recognition that the health and well-being of Waltham youth cannot solely be the responsibility of parents and schools, but that all sectors of the community have a role to play. And in order to do that collective work well, we need a dedicated entity responsible for convening stakeholders, conducting needs assessments and evaluations, leveraging resources, and coordinating the community toward the shared goal of health and wellness for young people. WPY operated as sort of a loose city coalition for about a decade, and then we incorporated into an independent nonprofit in 1997. I won't go through every single year since then, but I am proud to share some of the highlights. From 1994 to 2004, we managed something called the Workforce Prep Plus Grant, creating jobs for youth and laying the foundation for the expanded career exploration and training work we're doing today. In 2002, we were awarded an Even Start grant to work with school and community partners to establish the Waltham Family School. And we have some of our uh, family school leaders and partners in the room with us today. We served as the program's fiscal agent and advisor until the creation of the Friends of the Waltham Family School, a nonprofit founded in 2014 to support the program's funding and sustainability. The Waltham Family School continues to thrive today as a public-private partnership, working as a program in the Waltham Public Schools with the mission of preparing immigrant children for kindergarten and empowering English language learner families to be literate, self-sufficient, and created to the Waltham community, or sorry, connected to the Waltham community. In 2003, we secured funding to help create Healthy Waltham, and we served as its fiscal agent and advisor until its incorporation as a nonprofit in 2013. Healthy Waltham works to alleviate health disparities that exist in the city of Waltham and to improve the health outcomes of the city's most vulnerable residents. As many of you know, they significantly grew their operations in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and now operate pantries several times per month, distributing upwards of 60,000 pounds of fresh, high quality food to over 400 families at each pantry. In 2008, we helped establish the Safe Schools Healthy Students Coalition and later received a 10-year federal drug-free communities grant to support that work. Now in our final year of the grant, this funding has supported a number of community events focused on substance misuse prevention and adolescent mental health, given us the resources necessary to administer the Youth Risk Behavior Survey in partnership with the schools to all middle and high school students every two years, and led to the creation of our Teen Mental Health First Aid Internship Program, which you'll hear more about a little bit later. We're getting close to the end of the timeline. Thanks for your patience. In 2017, we piloted our summer internship program with seven interns and five employer partners. Today, we serve over 100 students every summer, and we're expanding our efforts to include school year internships as well. So many of you in the room have played an integral role in the growth of this program, and a special recognition is due to Mass Hire Metro Southwest who year after year has expanded their support of our career exploration and training efforts, most recently by contracting with us as a Youth Works program partner to coordinate the placement and support of 75 high school interns throughout the summer and school year. Lastly, in 2019, we were awarded a four-year $1.2 million grant from Newton Wellesley Hospital to lead a multi-agency collaborative focused on providing holistic wraparound supports to newcomer immigrant students and families with the goal of promoting higher graduation rates among emerging bilingual students. As we enter year four of this grant, we are proud of our accomplishments to date, which you'll hear more about later, and we are committed to this work in the long term. 
please join me in congratulating everyone in this room for all we have accomplished together in our 35 years. Welcome. I want to take a moment to welcome Mayor Jeanette McCarthy. Sorry to grab you just on your way in, but thank you so much for being here. As part of our recent growth and development, we've taken a step back to rethink our organizational structure, identity, and core values. Having grown in six years from a team of 1.5 to a team of 10, we made the decision to rework our organizational chart. We've expanded our non-program staff team to include a brand new development and communications coordinator, as well as a full-time administrative associate. Those roles are filled by Olivia Spellman and Bevelyn Galvez, respectively, and the two of them deserve an enormous round of applause for the work that's gone into uh, putting today's event on. So thank you, Bevelyn and Olivia. We also created a brand new operations director position, which was filled by the inimitable, Mark, I always have a hard time saying that word, inimitable Magali garcia Pletch back in August of 2021. Under Magali's leadership, we have increased our focus on staff development and well-being through expanded health and wellness benefits, an overhaul of our employee handbook, and an investment in intentional goal setting, feedback, and mutual accountability protocols. In a recent round of one-on-ones with members of our program team, I heard consistently that staff were feeling, staff feel we are quote, walking the walk in terms of creating a healthy work environment and that they are receiving some of the best supervision they've gotten throughout their entire careers. As David LeBlanc, our wraparound middle school coordinator put it, Waltham Partnership for Youth cares about us as whole humans. We have a culture of belonging with an emphasis on relationship building. Our HR practices will always be a work in progress, but we're proud of the strides we have made under Magali's leadership, and we are committed to ongoing improvement in this area to ensure we're doing the best we can to support our amazing staff. In fact, at WPY, there is perhaps only one thing more important than our staff, and that is, of course, our students. We have always tried to take the nothing, without, nothing about them without them approach meaning that we always seek input from those we are um, aiming to serve. This year, we're formalizing and institutionalizing that approach through the creation of a brand new bilingual youth advisory board. With support from co-advisors Olivia Spellman and board member Maria Mendiola, the youth advisory board is an opportunity for young people to plan and execute a community project aligned with our mission and goals offer, very importantly, most importantly, offer feedback and input to the WPY board and the WPY staff, and to also develop professional skills. We're grateful to the Sillerman Center for Philanthropy at Brandeis for their partnership in developing the Youth Advisory Board. And we look forward to sharing updates as this exciting initiative gets underway. We also took the time to reconsider our organizational identity, engaging students, staff, and board members in conversations about our mission, vision, and core values. What are the values that should drive all of our work? We found consensus around the values of belonging, centering youth, collaboration, compassion, courageous honesty, and justice. As partners in our work, we want to invite you all into the conversation about whether and how we currently demonstrate these values, as well as more ideas for what we could be doing more. So this is the interactive part of the event. You'll notice on your tables, there are some laminated cards. Um, that includes one value. So each group is assigned a value. And it also includes the questions that you see up here on the slides. If you're not at a table, um, feel free to just move yourselves around so that you're in a group. We would love for everyone to participate in this activity. Um, so we're going to ask you to each introduce yourselves at your table, if you haven't already. Um, assign one person to just read the value and its definition out loud. And then just engage in some conversation guided by these questions. How do I practice this value in my own work, in my own life? How does WPY practice this value? 
What more could we be doing individually and collectively to live these values on behalf of Waltham youth? So we're gonna pause the presentation for about 10 minutes as you all have some discussion. Um, we'll invite a few people to share afterwards if you want, but there's no pressure, you won't be required to share. We want you to just enjoy the conversation and dig in. Sorry, my apologies. One more moment. All if I could get your attention for just one more moment. Oh. Hi, Magali. If you can see my hand raised, please raise your hand. Yes to my educators. If you can see my hand raised, please be quiet and raise your hand. I just forgot to add instructions for those that are on the call. So just give me a moment. Um, where are those instructions? Um, if you are joining us virtually, please, um, please be encouraged to jot down some notes. We want you to engage in this activity as well and send them to us via email and we'll incorporate them into our reflection after today's event. Okay, sorry to interrupt your conversations. Go for it.
All right, everyone, if you can hear me, please put your, raise your hand. If you can hear me, please put one finger to your mouth and quiet your conversation. If you can hear me, please put one hand up and one hand to your mouth to quiet your conversation. I really hate to interrupt these discussions, um, but I also uh, want to honor our timeline as well. Thank you so much for diving in so earnestly. I had a chance to stop by just a few of the tables and was really inspired by what I was hearing. Um, we don't want to take too, too much time to do a share out, but we do want to give you an opportunity in case there are any nuggets that you really want to make sure other folks are hearing. So is there anyone who had um, belonging as their value um, that has anything you'd like to share from your conversation, either about an individual way to live out the value, something that WPY is doing or can be doing, or something in our community? Belonging. All right. If you did have belonging and you would be open to at least sharing, uh, reading the definition um, for us, please just put your hand up. And um, do we have the other mic? Does anyone know? Oh, yeah. OK. So thank you, Tracy. The belonging is we work to ensure all young people feel welcome, connected, fully accepted, and loved as they are. Their voices are valued and important. Great, thank you. Tracy, no pressure, but anything from your table that you wanna share? <laughs> now no one's gonna raise their hand, I know. We spend a lot of time talking about how wonderful it is that the um, partnership listens to what students want to say and incorporates that into the work that you do. and we extended that conversation into how it's important to make sure all students are heard and not necessarily all of the sort of typical groups of students that or youth that we might typically go to, but to make sure there's avenues to hear from people who may not be interested in sort of the mainstream things that we might talk about generally. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, is anyone interested in or willing to share out the definition that we have of centering youth? And it's okay if you want to just read the definition and not share anything else. Thanks. Oh, we've got Anne. Thank you, Anne. Hi. Um, our value was youth centered. We believe in the power and potential of all young people and seek to include youth as co creators of our work. Um, I'll say just one of the things that we talked about was, um, for example, in the area of life sciences is, is uh, how to open up career awareness to students and to listen to students for how they, what are the kinds of experiences they might like to have as they open up their world. I'm looking at Maria Mendiola here and is the um, student advisory group gets off the ground, I think it would be great to open up this idea of how do you want to learn about what's out there, that life science, for example, is not a narrow field. There are thousands of different ways that you can be involved in that. Thank you so much, Anne. Maria, we're looking at you. <laughs> Um, excellent. How about collaboration? A volunteer to read out the definition for collaboration. Um, Anne, if you want to pass it right over to Jack. How I co collaborate um, is when I listen to my teacher, um, do my schoolwork, and help my friends when they fall down. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jack. Um, anybody willing to share compassion? Read us your definition, and then if you'd like to share something from your discussion. Compassion. 
uh, wait for them. Yep. Uh, Erica, because we have people on the call. Yeah. Um, we approach all interactions with a sensitivity to unique emotional lives of others and a commitment to minimizing emotional harm. Um, and we talked a lot about um, the importance of self-reflection and how we're showing up to, to every interaction and conversation, um, and then considering um, you know, the, the unique experiences of others and that um, we are you know, trying to um, have empathy, but also understanding that we may never understand and that those unique experiences are completely different from ours and knowing that and, and, and celebrating those differences as well. Um, we also talked about how well um, WPY incorporates that into everything they do from staffing to youth involvement to partnerships um, and as many nonprofits do that well and it's kind of expected, but how amazing that would be if all companies and entities incorporated um, compassion into all of their practices and hopefully um, the partnerships and the business partnerships can learn from WPY and how um, you all do things. Thank you so much. I really appreciate those thoughts. Um, and last but not least, justice. Anyone willing to read their definition and share a little bit from your discussion? Thank you, Julie. Okay, we had justice, which is we are committed to advancing change throughout our social and economic systems that will increase equity and fairness for all. Pretty uh, lofty. Um, and uh, what we spent some time talking about is how, even in today's world of 2022, how far we still have to go and how each of our different areas where we work are addressing this in different ways. So I'm in healthcare. We talked about healthcare equity. We talked about the banking business and how they look at loans and how they do that. And we talked about commercial real estate and how they're looking at improving that across the lines too. And of course, that's something that the partnership is, is really values and is working towards. So I think the message is we've come so far, but we have so far to go. Great. Thank you. Um, and again, thank you all for really diving into that conversation. Um, as a few of you mentioned, as Julie mentioned, the, the value of justice is a lofty one. And, and all of them are, again, works in progress. By claiming these as our values, we are in no way claiming that we are exemplifying them perfectly. But what we are doing is publicly committing to working on them and toward them and everything that we do. And again, doing that collectively. I think I see a hand from Bob in the back. Oh my goodness, thank you for your courageous honesty and sharing, for coming forward with that. Um, courageous honesty. We believe that real change requires that we be truthful with ourselves and others about what works and what does not, and that we have the courage to do the right thing, especially when it is hard. I spend, um, we spend most of our time getting to know each other. There's three fantastic people at my table, and um, we're all in different organizations, and um, it was just so great to get it. And I think the main thing we came about was that if we set an example for the kids um, and let them know that sometimes you have to go against the crowd, sometimes you have to stand up for what you believe in. And um, I think uh, coming from people like us doing what we're doing is the most important thing to show by example. Great. Thank you. And as some of you may know, um, you, you know, Mr. Bob Mark, who is a um, somebody who has led by example his whole life and has been someone that has been an example to me when I was a young person. So thank you. Uh, Larry, I saw a hand. Uh, our group also talked about honesty, and I don't think it's courageous of me, but I do want to say that when Katie had the history of WPY there, I think she left out a very important event, the date when she became our executive director. And <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Larry. I really appreciate that. Um, and again, I appreciate all of you really diving into these conversations. This is just the start of these discussions. We look forward to having them with you as we continue our work together. 
Um, so it is now my absolute pleasure to introduce our operations director, Magal. Oh, before I do that, I just saw someone up here that I want to say hello to. I want to um, uh, thank uh, City Councilor Jonathan Paz for joining us today. Thank you. Um, And now it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our operations director, Magali garcia Pletch, to share more information about our programs. Please join me in giving her a warm welcome. All right, I'm five feet tall, so I had to move this down just a little bit for myself. Um, so good morning, WPY supporters, board members, students, and staff, both uh, all of you in person and then also those that are with us online. I saw board members, parents, partners, um, and my best friend from Texas is on. So thank you all for joining both in person and, and virtually. My name is Magali garcia Pletch, and I've had the immense privilege of serving as WPY's first ever operations director for the last 13 months. I am counting down to the day. Spending the last year getting to know this community while working with people that uplift and act on the core values of belonging, centering youth, collaboration, compassion, courageous honesty, and justice every day, even during our annual meeting, is an absolute joy. In my role as operations director, I oversee all of WPY's programming, which over the last year included career exploration and training, wraparound wall fam, and the WPY Coalition and Trailblazers. I'm here today to share a brief overview and highlights of our program areas over the last year, and also give a preview of where we hope to go in this next year. A general theme you'll notice across all program areas is growth. I am proud to share that in the last year, we have hired six new program staff members who have brought new perspectives, new ideas, and new energy into our programming. Thanks to their dedication and vision, all of our program areas are blossoming and will only continue to do so under their leadership. So I'll begin with the Career Exploration and Training Program, which connects students to life-altering career development opportunities through meaningful paid internship experiences and professional development. We kicked off 2022 with a brand new and highly capable Career Exploration and Training, or CET for short, program team, Majin Lucian, CET Program Coordinator, and Hannah Habscheid, CET program associate, joined WPY in January 2022. They dove right in to facilitate our annual Ready, Set, Job Career Readiness Conference, which officially marks the start of the summer internship program season. Additionally, as a part of the application process, all prospective summer interns participate in resume, cover letter, and interview sessions with WPY staff and Career Success Institute college student mentors through our partnership with the Bentley University Service Learning and Civic Engagement Center. Brian and Annabelle, I know you're here, so thank you. And of course, all of this leads up to our six-week paid summer internship program, complete with weekly career exploration and professional development workshops called Career Talks. This past summer, 101 high school students successfully completed their internship, with the vast majority of internships being entirely in person. We worked alongside 16 returning employer partners, and we're thrilled to welcome six new partners, including our host for today's event, APCAM. Collectively, this summer's interns earned an estimated $204,000. Interns reported using their summer wages for everything from hanging out with friends and paying for school event expenses to supporting their, rent, their parents with rent money and saving for college. In addition to the substantial economic impact of the summer internship program, we are also incredibly proud of the personal and professional growth that our interns experience. When surveyed for the end of summer report, 94% of interns agreed that their internship helped them to better understand their strengths and weaknesses, and over 80% of interns agreed that their internship made them more confident in their abilities. The relationships that interns build with their employers are equally important. Nearly 90% of interns shared that they would feel comfortable asking their supervisor for career advice in the future. Plus, employers overwhelmingly agreed that hiring a WPY intern was beneficial to their work, so much so that this year at least 17 interns were offered a job or internship opportunity with their employer for the school year. Well, I hope it goes without saying, this work would not be possible without the dedication of our WPY staff, 
board members, interns, and employer partners. It would also not be possible without the generous support of our funders, which include Astra AstraZeneca, the Clues Fund, Cummings Foundation, Mass General Brigham Newton Wellesley Hospital, who also hosted 17 interns this past summer across, I think, 15 different departments. Lauren Lele, thank you for that. Middlesex Savings Bank, the City of Waltham, and Mass Hire Metro Southwest Workforce Board, who not only provides funding for program operations, but also funded 36% of its summer internships this past year. Further, starting this fall, we are excited to be expanding our internship program into the school year, thanks to funding from Mass Hire. We plan to place at least 30 students in paid internships, with six interns supporting WPY program staff, five interns serving as mentors in the English Language Learners Middle School Mentoring Program, and up to 20 interns who will be leading our teen mental health first aid efforts, which you'll hear about a bit later. Finally, I am pleased to share that we are integrating all of our education-based internships and related career exploration opportunities under the umbrella of the newly formed Educators of Tomorrow Initiative, whose goal is to strengthen and diversify the educator workforce of the future specifically by supporting young people from historically underrepresented backgrounds within the education field to pursue a career in education. This work will be led by our recently hired, as in her first day was this week, Educators of Tomorrow Specialist Mary Crathwall, and supported by CUT Program Coordinator Majeen Lucian, and will be an integral part of the career exploration and training program moving forward. All right, moving on to wraparound. Wraparound Waltham is a multi-agency collaborative of educators and service providers working to address disparities in high school graduation and dropout rates among newcomer immigrant and emerging bilingual students in Waltham Public Schools. Wraparound Waltham works closely with students and their caregivers to comprehensively understand the needs, strengths, and personal goals of each student. The program leverages in-school and out-of-school supports designed to address needs such as food, housing, and transportation, employment, linguistic and social inclusion, school belonging and engagement, academic progress, ability to adapt to new environments, and access to mental health care. We began the 2021 to 2022 school year with a revamped program model that had four major elements, the welcome class, academic case management, Waltham Welcome Center, and funded partner referrals and activities. A partnership between WPY and Waltham High School, the welcome class provides newly immigrated students with a warm welcome to the Waltham community and Waltham High School through a 68-week class. Between September 2021 and May 2022, we offered five cohorts of the welcome class, reaching a total of 136 newcomer immigrant students. In addition, the Waltham High School academic case manager led weekly check-ins with welcome class students to track and monitor their academic progress and provide referrals to community resources as needed. 95% of newcomers that participated in the welcome class progressed to the next grade level, including two students who graduated. Following a successful pilot in spring of 2021 and in partnership with Waltham Public Schools, we launched the Waltham Welcome Center in November of 2021. Hosted at McDevitt Middle School and staffed by bicultural and bilingual WPY and WPS staff, the Waltham Welcome Center is a welcoming space and central referral hub of information and resources for newcomer immigrant families, particularly Spanish speakers, with students in Waltham Public Schools. Last year, the Waltham Welcome Center was open for six hours per week after school and supported over 150 families with everything from food and housing insecurity to health and mental health services, school processes, immigration, legal aid, and COVID-related assistance. Importantly, a key aspect of the Wraparound Initiative continues to be the robust partnership with our funded partners, which includes Children's Charter, I saw Michelle here, Doc Wayne, I saw Maggie, and the Right to Immigration Institute. I don't think I saw our partners from there, but if you're here, hi. Between supporting students' mental health through one-on-one -on -one and group support sessions and providing students and families with legal support, these partners are key to our ability to truly wrap our arms around newcomer students and families and welcome them to the Waltham community. After a year of piloting several new initiatives, we are looking forward to strengthening our program during this school year. 
Much of the work over the last year was led by Alexa Cuellar, who was hired in November of 2021 and has recently transitioned into the newly created role of Wraparound High School Program Coordinator. I am also excited to share that Wraparound is expanding into McDevitt Middle School. This work will be led by the Wraparound Middle School Program Coordinator, David LeBlanc, um, who we hired in May of 2022. In these new roles, Alexa and Dave will be building on the momentum that they created over the last year, strengthening WPY's relationship with Waltham High School and McDevitt Middle School, and continuing to coordinate and deepen our services with newcomer students. And finally, we have also hired our first ever full-time Waltham Welcome Center coordinator, Marlene Godine, who also just started last week. With a full-time coordinator, we will now be in the position to open the Welcome Center from Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m., doubling the hours from last year, while also having a stronger presence at community and school events. We hope that all of these efforts will broaden our reach to welcome newcomer students and families to this vibrant community. And moving on to our third and final program area, the WPY Coalition. The WPY Coalition is a multi-sector community coalition working together to make Waltham a safe, healthy, just, and engaged community where all young people can thrive. As we entered year nine of our 10-year Drug-Free Communities federal grant, last year the WPY Coalition focused on supporting the overall wellness of Waltham young people while also planning for a future beyond the grant. In addition to our monthly coalition meetings, the coalition led community presentations of the 2021 Youth Risk Behavior Survey. We spearheaded our second annual mental health awareness event on the Commons in September, which featured 40 resource tables hosted by health and wellness organizations, six interactive workshops, and a dozen family-friendly activities throughout the day. With financial contributions from Waltham Public Schools and Boston Children's Hospital, we also continue to offer free mental health service referrals through a partnership with William James Interface Referral Service. All of this work was led by the incomparable Ivy Watts Calixt, who stepped down from her role as WPY Coalition Coordinator in July of 2022 to focus her efforts on her growing mental health advocacy and business while raising her new daughter, Charlotte Singh. We're lucky enough to get to see pictures of Charlotte quite frequently. The youth arm of the coalition was led by the WPY Trailblazers, who are high school student leaders focused on educating, advocating, and creating policy change around substance misuse and mental health. After studying the 2021 Youth Risk Behavior Survey and being particularly concerned by the poor mental health outcomes among middle school youth, the Trailblazers applied for and were awarded a $10,000 mini grant through the 84 movement. This grant funded the implementation of WPY's first ever teen mental health first aid training in the spring with the goal of strengthening the capacity of high school students to respond to mental health crises among their peers and to become advocates for mental health. As a result, 19 Waltham High School students became certified in teen mental health first aid. Following the training, they facilitated workshop for middle school youth and presented to district administrators to advocate for more resources to support mental health in school. Every student who was trained in teen mental health first aid shared that they have used their newly learned skills with their peers and feel more equipped to support a friend who is experiencing a mental health crisis. We plan to continue this important work during this school year, evolving our Trailblazers program into an internship for up to 20 students who will be trained in teen mental health first aid and take on community projects related to mental health advocacy. This will be led by longtime leader of Trailblazers, Shanisha Christmas. I don't see you, Shanisha Christmas, hi. Who has transitioned into new role as teen mental health first aid coordinator. As we enter the final year of the Drug-Free Communities Grant, we also remain committed to being a convener of those invested in the well-being of Waltham youth. Our hope is to continue serving as facilitators for interagency collaboration among youth service, youth serving organizations and advocates by re-envisioning the coalition and youth service provider network groups. We are also committed to leading the administration of the 2023 Youth Risk Behavior Survey alongside our partners in Waltham Public Schools and then taking this community, community data on tour throughout Waltham to ensure that we are listening to youth voice and making programming and policy decisions accordingly. 
I hope in hearing about all the work that WPY has been up to over the last year, you are, like I am, filled with hope for our future, which will be led by the incredible young people that we work with. And with that, it is now my pleasure to introduce one of those incredible young people and this morning's student speaker, Ivy Garcia. Ivy is a junior at Waltham High School and has participated in several WPY programs, including as an intern for the last two summers, first with the Waltham High School Windows and Mirrors program, and then with Waltham Boys and Girls Club. She also holds many leadership positions, including serving as a mentor for the English Language Learners Mentorship Program at McDevitt Middle School, moderating a career talks panel during the summer's internship program, and serving on a WPY hiring committee. As I'm sure you'll hear, Ivy is one of those people who dedicates herself to her community and truly embodies our values here at WPY. And now without further ado, I'll pass the mic to Ivy. I will take this away because I am also five feet tall and that's a problem. And I just, I can't stay in one place. I have to move, you know what I'm saying? Good morning. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you guys. Okay, I'm Ivy Garcia. It's a pleasure to be with you all here today. I'm a student at Walton High, as Magali mentioned. I also have the pleasure to be the co-president of Latina Student Union, which has been focused to bring, well, to bring culture back to Walton High, and the co-president of Multilingual Student Union, which works mostly with ESL department at Walton High, but anyone who has English has the second language is more than welcome to join to any of those um, programs, organizations. So while it's high, everyone is going to be welcome. I feel honored to be here with you all today, and it's a pleasure to talk to you all. Thanks to WPY to give me this opportunity. I want to start mentioning that my first job what my first official job was in McDonald's has McDonald's has a kosher. I started doing customer services, which I find out that I like to talk with people and I want to do that more. I started like getting engaged with other things. Then my second job was through WPY and Windows and Mirrors program internship, where we use art to reflect students, their future, future for the students, I'm sorry. And then I started working in Waltham Boys and Girls Club, where I have the opportunity to learn to learn and be full time in the classroom, which I enjoy a lot. And then I start jumping up and wrap around classes just to talk about Latina Student Union and WPY, which was a pleasure and just did two jobs in one class. And I love to do it. Then I started getting involved with WPY was one of those pieces where I started building my puzzle, the puzzles of my life just putting it all together. That was how I started actually working at McDevitt Middle School with ESR program to summer. And I started being a teacher assistant and that was when I volunteered for be a high school mentor for eight graders who now are in ninth grade and I love to see them every day in the highways. It's such a great experience. And then my next step was working in Walton Boys and Girls Club, as I mentioned before, and I'm currently working there with first and second grade, and I love to be there for them. I learned that I'm, I, I like to be in a classroom, and I'm not just there for teach lesson of the day. I'm not just there to teach whatever schedule is saying. I'm also there to be someone where my students, my kids, and everyone around me can lean on, and which I will appreciate a lot if you decide to do it. Since I started working with children, I know, I just know, I have a feeling that I wanna start in the education path. And I just like, start getting involved in more and more, and now I wanna keep going the education field. That's why I decided to get an internship this summer at Waltham Boys and Girls Club. And now I'm currently working here, there, as I mentioned. And for the same reason, now I would like to use education part to teach others and others around me as um, I learn. As I mentioned before, I would like to be someone who, where, who everyone can trust on and just lean on. And I'm open to hear 
and also get feedback from anyone because I believe that getting better is the only depend of us, also the people around us helping us to grow up. For me, everything is about helping them, students, people around me, make me feel. Being a mentor that I wish I had when I was a kid is great. And I feel so proud of myself because when I was a kid, I wish I had someone to just be there for me and help me, support me, and just have someone to ask questions and just be there for me for forever. And I didn't have no one. Now, I feel like I'm that mentor for those young people, not only Walton High, also in my community, which I'm really proud of. And um, then, now I know that from mentor, I become a teacher assistant, and I'm going to be a great teacher one day. <laughs> Thank you. However, I know, and it's my, under my understood, that being a teacher can be a little bit complicated. Because <laughs> we have to set up boundaries for our students. However, those boundaries don't hold us back to create relationships and connections between our students. So that's why I think, I believe the WBY is successful because the, our staff make and create those connections and relationships between the students in the program. That's how WBY help us as students in the program to, program to grow and find a real why or reasoning why we have to be in this career path to internship. That is, in my case, in the education field. And, sorry, I get a little bit lost. <laughs> and um, everyone starts from somewhere. I start from my house. <laughs> I start just learning basic things about home. Then I start in school. Then uh, I just start getting involved. I start in drop-room classes, and everyone starts from somewhere. Some students start from those drop-room classes for newcomers. Others start from translators, where five for mental health is important. And others start in the internships, like me. That's how. I know the WPY may do, does a great job listening to students like me. So that's the reason why I'm here today, because WPY staff and everyone in our office make a great job hearing my voice, and now I'm here today to be here for all of you all, for all of you. And uh, it's a pleasure. I think that everyone can see how much those organization or community partners have supported me and helped me to grow. Now imagine how everyone in this room, all our community partners, how much effort are putting in for us, June people, and how we have all these different opportunities to grow up and just keep it up for us, for June. And thank you guys for that. With this, I would love to leave you all with my personal quote that is, the mistake is not falling down, the mistake is not getting up. It's just something that keeps me going every day, because if you decide to give up and leave in the middle of the match, in the middle of the field, you will never know if you could make that shot or if you could win that game. Thank you all for listening and be here today. Sorry, I, I saw some tears in the audience and then that made me start. Um, as you can see, um, we have a, an incredible um, future educator in Ivy. She's already had the opportunity to mentor so many young people and the idea that she will one day have her own classroom, uh, again, just fills me and I know all of us with incredible hope, so thank you. Um, so we're nearing the end of our time together. Um, thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Before we do close out, I just want to leave you with some um, ideas on how to stay involved with us. So if you're interested in hosting an intern, serving on a career panel, or finding other ways to engage with our career exploration and training work, please connect with Majeen and or Mary, if you all could raise your hands. Um, before you leave um, or get their contact info, I do want to specifically let you know that our young people have asked for more opportunities in STEM, thank you, ABCAM, business and finance. Um, we're always open to all industries, but if you particularly have um, leads in those industries, we're all ears. Um, 
If you're interested in finding ways to support our wraparound work with newcomer immigrant students and families, please connect with Dave or Marlene, if you could wave. Um, Alexa is not with us today. She's, uh, I think she might be joining in remotely, but she is also available. You can find her contact info on our website. Um, and if you're interested in finding ways to support our teen mental health first aid internship, please connect with Shanisha Christmas. Shanisha's right over there. And of course, you can always connect with uh, Magali or myself on any of this. Lastly, when you checked in, we know we gave you lots of stuff, um, including a flyer with all of our fundraising and development events for the year, including our brand new Common Goal Soccer Tournament, our tried and true team trivia for a cause, which will just happen a little bit later in the year this year, and our beloved partnership appreciation celebration. If you're interested in sponsoring and or registering for any of these events, please see Olivia. And since our Common Goal Soccer Tournament is right around the corner, I do want to spend just a moment on that exciting new event. Under Olivia's leadership, we're hosting this brand new fundraiser with the hopes of creating a multi-generational, multicultural community event. Teams will consist of youth and adults, and matches will run um, either 10 or 15 minutes. We're still finalizing the format. We also plan to have food trucks and a variety of other activities for those who are not playing in the tournament. We would love to walk away today with some uh, interested or even registered sponsors or team members. Um, so you can see up here, um, if you're under 18 and you wanna play, you play for free. Um, if you're over 18 and you wanna register as an individual, it's $35. You can register for a full team um, at $500. Um, and you can just sponsor the event and not be on a team if you'd like as well. Um, so again, this is our first time hosting this event. We're hoping for a wonderful turnout. Um, and we'll all be around for another few minutes if you wanna just stay. There's lots of food left and coffee. So please help yourselves. And thank you so much for being here today.